Oh. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video here from the Off Grid Garage in sunny, hot Australia. It is after after it is after Christmas now, and even during the holidays, I kept working on the battery shelf. I didn't make any videos apart from the last one you have already seen, but I can show you the end result here. We are almost done, man. And I tell you, we are almost done building the battery shelf. I'm not kidding. We are almost done. I have worked hard during the holidays here. Told the family I haven't got time for Christmas or anything. Well, when the boys came over, we actually calibrated some spat. So that was nice. I already have the panels here for the back side. And here on the front, I have mounted all the circuit breakers. We've got our main inverter here. We've got our 10 amp circuit breaker and the DC to DC 5 volt converter. And this will be our 63 amp incoming circuit breakers from the solar charge controllers and you can see there will be more right there can there can be six circuits in this switchboard here but we've got only four yeah so so one on the carport west roof east roof and then west two um i'm not sure if i put anything on there because there are trees over this side of the roof already so there won't be anything maybe i use the panels which are not as good on this side just to you know they're bringing something but yeah look at all these big cables here they all fit in nicely and i've talked all the terminals here with 3.5 newton meters as requested by no arc so from here we've got the 48 volt coming out going to our victron converter over there and I've also connected the converter here to supply our 5 volt load. I still haven't received the other fuse block there. It is public holiday again because Christmas Day number one and number two fell onto the weekend. So here in Australia, we then have the Monday and Tuesday off as well as a public holiday. We are not wasting any holidays here in Australia. So today and tomorrow is still public holiday. So four day celebration of Christmas, basically. Yeah, and here we can see the cables coming out of the switchboards or going into the switchboards, I must say, because this is our positive and negative bus bar here, supplying power to the load. And these are the incoming cables because, because here the current will come into the bus bars here from the solar charge controllers. And I haven't done any work here so far. I'm still waiting for this other fuse block here, which we talked about. I know it's not necessary, but I would like to have it. So it's clean. It's consistent it's nice i thought about these covers here over the bus bars and i would really like to have single covers so one cover over here and another cover over here so just slim covers to cover the bus bars here you know similar to similar to this one i don't know i could go with one cover here covering both bus bars but i would really like to have separate ones yeah and then once they are there i need to mark where all the cables are i need to make cutouts here very easy to do with a jigsaw very slow cut and the acrylic will not break yeah so i'm still thinking about these covers here for these bus bars here i haven't got quite a right idea at the moment and also this all needs to be serviceable from the top so the the top the top roof panel here basically i will be able to take this off and have full access to this compartment here 12 volt area and the 48 volt area and hence the idea separate covers here so if there's a screwdriver or something falling in it's all safe yeah so please let me know if you have any great ideas i'm reading all the comments by the way thank you very much for all your hundreds of comments on my videos i can't keep up replying to them okay i think we should go ahead and mount these panels now here at the back I also need to put this beam back in here at the top. Wow, these magnets are strong. Jeez. I've got no trouble holding a sledgehammer here. And also, I have put this um, sticky foam here. So you can see it here at the front as well. It's half visible still for the other panel going downwards than here. And I've got one here in the vertical beam. So the reason is the reason is mainly because I want to keep the insects out as much as possible. Well, talking about this, yeah, you can see the gap. The panel is not long enough. The panel is not long enough. We have a massive gap at the bottom. The same over here as well. There's a gap. 
And this is not good. There will be there will be there will be insects moving in and starting families and all kind of shit. So that's not good. So what I thought is, once the battery shelf is in place, so what I would like to do is I'll take the silicon cartridge and close these gaps from underneath here, right, all the way around, even at the front, and I will totally, completely seal the bottom gaps around the shelf. And my hope is that there will not be many insects crawling in. So I'm trying to make the shelf as insect tight as possible. Yeah, well, the silicon is my idea at the moment. If you have any other idea how to close these gaps there, I was thinking about rubber or something where the panels actually sit on and it closes the gap at the bottom. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I think I go for the silicon one because this is then it's then it's super tight. Okay, enough talking. Let's do some work. Man, months ago I thought about if I put this beam back in, everything is ready. Everything is ready to go then with the shelf. And now it's the day. Merry Christmas, Andy. I'm using these self-tabbing screws for these holes here. You drill a four millimeter hole and then use these screws and they tap an M5 thread into the hole automatically. Done. Well, and these few screws are definitely enough to hold this panel here in place. So the next task would be to drill holes here for these glands. I just don't know where and how many I need. Do I need two per connection? Positive, negative, or do I get two into one gland? I've got this 40 millimeter conduit here and two 35 millimeter cables. They are going in very, very easily. And this is the next size down. See, and this is not enough to fit two of the 35 millimeter cables. So if I would connect them to the solar charge controller with a 35 millimeter, there is definitely not enough room. So for all the big loads or solar charge controllers, I need the 40 millimeter conduit anyway. Yeah, and these are the glands for it. Look at this, they are huge. They are huge. Look at my hand. Look at this gland. That is insane, hey? And look at this, my step drill is not large enough to cover these holes. I probably need to mark all these holes and use the jigsaw. Wow, that's a lot of work. So, and now comes the tricky question. What size of clamp, what size of conduit do I need here on the back of the shelf to um, supply my inverters or to get supply from the solar charge controllers? So this would be a calculation now you have to do depending on your cable length, on your amps and on the voltage drop you want to allow. Because when the shelf is in place over there, I've got actually no big distance from the charge controllers inside the cabinet all the way down there in this rail and up. It's less, it's less than 2.5 meters. And around 2.6, 2.7 meters for the inverter. We're using the big Clans 40 millimeter conduit here for our bus bars connecting to the inverters because this is our biggest load, right? And I cannot imagine I'm connecting more than four inverters to this battery here. So, and then we've got our solar incoming here. I would drill all six of these holes because we may end up with six different charge controllers, six different arrays of solar here on our garage carport, the other shed. And here in the 12 volt department, I would drill four holes in this area here, just um, small 25 millimeter conduit. So this is this is more like data cable, communication cables, network, whatever we are going to do in the future, 
RS485, anything is possible, you know? So I just want to be prepared as much as possible. I'm not saying these holes will be enough for everything I I'm going to do. Well, I will never be able to take this off again, ever. Because the whole shelf will be screwed to this horizontal beam there. Yeah, it goes, it goes through the metal frame here, and then I won't be able to take this off again. Well, this will be very noisy, messy, drilling, cutting, filing. Probably for the next two hours. So if you want to do something else and come back later on, that's totally fine. First one done. These are all the clients we need at the moment for two inverters. Well, we've got only one inverter at the moment and two solar charge controllers. But I've got space for four more solar charge controllers and for, well, this is for one, two, three, four inverters. I really need these large ones here for the 35 millimeter cable to get this comfortably through the conduit. These ones are just not large enough. See, I cannot, I can barely fit the 35 in here. So that's why I need the bigger ones. But if we go with the larger inverters eventually, I will need a 70 mil cable. And I'm not able to get 70 mil through this same conduit as the two 35 millimeter cables. So I would need to go 50 millimeter. But this 50 millimeter is a huge conduit. It's a very huge conduit. So I thought instead we are going for a 32 millimeter conduit and well, we use only one conduit for each cable. That's basically the same principle we've done here with the battery 1.0, yeah? positive and negative in a, in a separate conduit. And this is what the other additional two smaller holes are for. So this will be one inverter with 70 mil and this will be another inverter with 70 mil connected. Yeah, I thought I'm going with these different conduit sizes to be a little bit more flexible. I'm not 100% sure what the future will be, but this gives me a lot of variety now, a lot of options to connect inverters and other loads to the battery. So I hope it all works out in the future. Yeah, very happy with our clan plate so far. That's a massive job. I worked until it was dark outside. That's how long it took me to get all these holes here in this aluminium plate. But it looks good. Okay, guys, I guess the next step will be to actually get rid of this wooden shelf here, of this pallet shelf I built 12 years ago. And then it's time to move the battery shelf in its final location just over here next to the electrical cabinet with all the solar charge controllers. And then we'll see if this actually all fits <laughs> or if I have forgotten something to consider actually. So I'm not sure. We will see. Um, good. Tomorrow I will mount this um, bottom plate here, this panel. This is the back side. This all can stay closed. All right, guys. I would say it's time to calibrate this bed. It's probably 8.30 or something in the evening now. <laughs> but I'm glad I've finished all this work here with the aluminium now. 
Guys, thank you so much for all your kind comments here on the channel, all your support, buying me a beer on my website or using the links on my website to buy batteries, tools or testers. All this help and support is very much appreciated. And until the next video guys, you stay charged and thank you for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.